Hi, my name is Devon Dames from Devon Dames International. Today, we are interviewing the gorgeous, the talented Alex Moreau, who has been my personal assistant for a long time, and she's leaving us. So we wanted to do her exit interview, since we love her so much, and we care about her so much, so that we can actually track her growth from the time she started with us to the time that she will be the CEO of her own company. We're in Melbourne, Florida, and she is leaving us for the big New York City. So we wanted to wish her well and interview her so that for those of you who are transitioning out of her job, you can actually take some cues and lessons from her as it relates to that transition. So Alex, how are you doing? I'm doing well. So these are your last couple of days with us. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really excited, but I'm also feeling a little stressed, but it's all good, you know? Why are you feeling a little stressed? Well, when you're moving and you just got your job offer and now you're like, I got to move now, and that all hits you, it can be, you know, it can be stressful just, just for that. But getting all everything to line up and getting everything to sort of, you know, all come together with other people you're moving with as well, because I'm moving with a few other people, that can be crazy, you know, to coordinate and orchestrate all that. So I'm kind of feeling a little overwhelmed, but the fact that I'm going to New York is making up for it. So Now, you are an FSU graduate. Yes. And the day of our interview, I told you we wouldn't hold that against you. <laughs> yes, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am an alum of... The great you! And FSU is not one of our favorite places, but the day you walked into our lives was fascinating. Share what that was like on your first interview as it relates to both my wife and I okay. doing an interview with you and how alarming that was. Well, by the way, just as a cut, you can edit this out. I'm just going to talk to him, so I'm not going to look at the cameras anymore. Um, so that interview was fun uh -huh. and personally not everybody's like this but I think that interviews are the most fun exhilarating part of the job getting <laughs> process and when I met them I immediately felt calm because I'm like these people are, are cool and they're mm -hmm. good people and they're hard-working people I could just tell by their demeanor and the way they were asking the questions and I fed off of your energy you and Odette's energy um, it just seemed to, we seemed to bond almost immediately and with, with Linda, our other, our coworker. And so the interview was, you know, for most people it can be, you know, for a dual interview, mm -hmm. people can get kind of shaky and be like, anybody can be like, okay, how, who do I look at when I answer? Like, what do I do? Because it comes back you crazy, you know, from both angles. But it was sort of like I had met two new friends and mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, we just developed a really good working relationship from the beginning. But what I got from it, you wasn't intimidated by any of the questions <laughs> that we threw at That's you. Good. <laughs> especially the subjective ones that don't really have a right or wrong answer. Such as when we had asked you, what animal do you see yourself as in the jungle? I don't remember that question. Oh, I do. I don't. <laughs> did I say something? What did I even no, say? No, no, oh, no, gosh, no. I don't even remember that. Well, it was even great that you don't even remember because I don't remember either. <laughs> But I remember that it was such a calm presence that you actually gave the aura of feeling so confident about who you are as a person. And most of those subjective questions, that's exactly what they're there to do. It's more creating of a psychological profile of can this person fit with us as we move into that same space. Right. So we felt comfortable with you right away. And for from our experience, you have provided such an invaluable source of energy coming in. It was now, with you being in that space, even though it was for just the personal assistant to me, coming into that space provided another lift for me. Oh man, I gotta go to work today. Alex is there and she's coming in with this brand new energy. Oh my God, and we're doing something new. And the funny thing was, even from your first day, you were very encouraging from, from my point of view as to what I needed in a personal assistant. But at the same token, 
It was very exciting to go through all of the new activities. Why don't you share with us some of those new things that we had to learn that we didn't know before that created some challenge for us, but at the same token, you know, in this digital world of internet space and wanting to grow an internet business, what were some of the challenges that we faced? Well, when you're doing a startup business, um, you're sort of learning together, and that was kind of helped because when you go into another type of job, maybe that's already very much established and very, you know, everybody has their way of doing things, you have to sort of adapt to an already established model. And so for us, we were learning all of this together. I was just learning how to do some of the deeper details of it, but we were all opening these programs and looking at them together. So it kind of gives you a sense of camaraderie when you're both doing it. With your boss, you feel like not only like, like there's no, you know, you're just together learning something, you're just two people learning, and that feels good no matter who you are, no matter how you work, no matter how, like what type of learner you are, if you're a visual or auditory, like learning with somebody makes it easier and quicker and more efficient. And so some of the programs that we were starting out doing were um, Devon needs a lot of you know, video editing like this and like audio editing and things that I was an editor, like a copy editor, so I had no idea this type of editing at all. So not only did I feel not intimidated because I didn't know it, I knew I wasn't the only one. None of us knew. <laughs> and so we were all learning together. And so that's what gave me a peace of mind throughout the preliminary process of, uh -huh. you know, learning how the business works and what you needed. Yeah, but you took that and you just ran with it. I mean, <laughs> I didn't have to tell you after a while what to do or where to go or even how to schedule your own schedule. But I think one of the questions in the interview that Hoder had asked you, mm -hmm. that really sealed the deal for us. How do you handle someone with a creative mind in a space whereby you are not intimidated or you are not afraid to put your own foot down for your own views? Right. How are you able to stay true to that? Well, that question can be hard because it's... Um it's deep, and you have to be introspective in that moment and like answer that question like wholeheartedly and authentically. So, you know, sometimes I'm good at that. Sometimes I'm like, man, I gotta wait to answer this, you know. But, you know, for that question, when you meet somebody, you're receiving energy as soon as you meet them. You're not okay, you know, like you just naturally are going to receive that person's energy. And whether that's a creative energy or an efficient, you know, rigid energy, you're going to feel it immediately. So as long as you're in touch with how you receive people's energy and, you know, how to adapt, that is all about, that's how like all jobs are. You mm -hmm. know, you adapt every second of the day. And so when I met Devon, I felt a really good energy, but also a very creative, visionary energy. And so... I'm like, you know what, I know this type of person. Devon's his own individual, but I know how this energy works. Let me adapt how I work to him so we can complement each other. So that was sort of how I approached the beginning of this job. Like, I'm meeting someone for the first time. We bonded really quickly, but we need to adapt to each other. Mm -hmm. I need to adapt to you, and then by default, he adapts to me, and then we execute these goals that are up in the visionary cloud, <laughs> start to become a reality, because I help, you know, the execution process. That's why I was hired. Mm -hmm. And so that was sort of, adapting is key for me, for that. Yeah and taking notes and writing down his notes, <laughs> whether they are in a year from now or they're next week. <laughs> that was important. So how soon did you get the call after your interview <laughs> that you're hired? About three hours. <laughs> Maybe less. Maybe less than three hours. I'm pretty sure it was, it was quick. It was very fast. Uh -huh. well, Flattering. You are, you are more deserving, <laughs> and uh, that's why we, we actually really enjoyed having you. But somewhere along the line, as we were going through all this visionary stuff, you got a call from your dream job. Yes. This job that's, that you've always had in the back of your mind. And describe what that day felt like for you. Well, I was here when I got the call. I was sitting in this, on this, like, you know, at this table, and I was, I just got a random phone call. I didn't know who it was. It wasn't saved in my phone, and I answered it, and it was from about five months ago. And I had been at this job for this just summer. So this was before I even came back to Melbourne. I had applied for this. Just never thought I'd hear anything back. For It's a publishing job. And I got the call here way later than when most people get callbacks. It was so delayed. But nonetheless, I got it. And 
I was shaking, freaking out, you know, because you feel like life, your life just flashed before your eyes in a really good way. And so that was, that was monumental for me because I've had some really good jobs. I've been really fortunate to have some pretty, pretty good jobs for an English major right out of college. But this is the dream location and the dream position. And so that was quite exhilarating. Um, but also, like I said in the beginning, then the stressful process came out because now i got to plan how to get there. But, you know, the initial moment was here in the office, and it was, it was, Linda, you know, was there. She was like, I saw us, like, thought something was wrong because I was just so shaken up about it. I was, like, freaking out. Uh -huh. But, you know, everybody was so supportive because, you know, when you get a great job like that, you're sad to leave the great job you have. You know, because I bonded with, with you and with Linda, and so... You know, taking that job was exciting, but also like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta leave them because I mm -hmm. helped start you guys. So it was, it was hard and exciting. Yeah, but in that transition, what did we tell you? You gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta grow. You gotta go. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what you said, I think, and just we're really encouraging about, you know, even though it was, in, it was so out of nowhere, you just worked with me, and you were, you were, you were really cool about it. So. Oh, we're happy about that. <laughs> but we're happy about your growth as well, because most people think that leaving is the termination. Uh, technically, I don't feel that way. I know. But <laughs> how I feel and how I look at it is that you are an extension of a family that you have here. So we're we're simply now the family that she's leaving us, going to New York, I want to say temporarily, <laughs> whether it's five years, ten years, that's still temporary in my book, but I do have a feeling at some point in time, we're going to cross again. I just have that feeling. Mm -hmm. So whether that means you have to go to New York and get your feet wet and get a super duper great job. We all know that those things are going to happen for you, and I'm sure that you're going to be happy, more than happy, to be in that space, because I remember what it felt like when my wife and I had to move for the first time. Yeah. It was exciting, it was alluring, and it was somewhere that we wanted to be. So for that, I can just imagine how you feel. <laughs> and not only that, we know that your parents is also in the Melbourne area, so, and you being the only child, I mean, I can relate. If I had a daughter, sorry, not if I have a daughter, <laughs> I do have a daughter, I would like her to be something just like you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I think she's on that track, but hopefully you'd come back in our lives and mentor her in a way that states, you know what, if I was your dad, this is how I would do it. Because kids don't really listen to their parents. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> So, but someone that I know intimately that's probably going to remain in our lives, even though you're going to New York, I'm sure my daughter will have those very same dreams and the very cycle will begin again with understanding what that means in order to leave your comfort zone. And I am all about individuals leaving their comfort zone. And as remarkable as it is for you to leave your comfort zone here, we're honored that you have the courage and the ability to really take that challenge on and say, you know what, this is where I want to be. This is who I am. And you're staying true to your core beliefs. It's fascinating to watch you in that space. And we want to see you grow and we want to see you flourish because we know that we had a part, a small part, nonetheless, a part that has taught us now this is what you brought to the table in teaching us as it relates to letting go. There are no mistakes in life. And meeting people have a way of broadening your vision and broadening your belief in people. Because sometimes when you meet people, you get disappointed, you get sidetracked, but in life it's going to be okay. So we're happy and elated that you're on your voyage, and we can't wait to see what fruits of your labor is going to produce. Mm -hmm. Now, you've made a move to New York without you even being there. Yes. How did you accomplish that? Well, with a lot of help, we do 
fortunately we have a connection, my boyfriend and I, who are, we're both moving, we have a friend in New York, thank God, because if we didn't, that, he was instrumental in, you know, getting us set up, going to these apartment viewings, because we're looking, we were looking for an apartment, you know, right away, and so it was all so fast, and so without him being there to actually physically be in New York and do all this on his downtime, in his, on his lunch breaks, he already has a job, so... That was so vital to our growth there and to our start starting platform there because we would just be going there, spending a lot more money, trying to do it all ourselves in a very new place, and that would have taken up time, that would have taken up a lot more money, and so he's saving us a lot of heartache on that end because he's there. And so he's been nothing but great for us, and we've been doing our, our part too, but all from afar, so you kind of feel weird when you're, you know, in this position, when there's transition so big, which it's kind of out of your hands. And so, you know, in a way. So you have to trust that the person there, number one, you have a person there, and that's great. And you know they're good people. I'm, I'm fortunate to have a really great future roommate there who does his job and will get, you know, cross all the T's because, you know, I'm a little bit of a control freak. Oh, yeah. And so when someone else is doing their job, I respect that. I can trust him a little better like that. You know, he's, he's proactive. So that was helpful um, as far as us doing this remotely, to mm -hmm. answer your question. Yes. Now, where do you see yourself in five years? Five years? Ugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. Um, you know, this was in my five-year plan five years ago, and I'm here. Uh -huh. And I didn't think I'd be because it's hard to get to New York. But I'm on my way. In five years, I'd like to be happy. I'd like to be fulfilled. I'd like to, you know, have, I want to have mastered New York because I'm one of those people that when I move somewhere, I want to know where everything is. I mm -hmm. want to meet all the amazing people I can as fast as I can. And I want to feel like a New Yorker. And so I don't, you know, have giant expectations for certain goals because I don't want to disappoint myself, but I want to be happy and comfortable you know, for the first time, because I never felt at home or comfortable in Florida. So I want to finally feel like that somewhere, and that's my goal, is to feel comfortable and happy, you know, and challenged as well. <laughs> Alex on her way to finding her tribe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's that's going to be a beautiful journey, and I can't wait to read it in your books that you're going to write, <laughs> in your speeches that you're going to talk about. Now, beyond the next five years of being happy, Where do you think you're going to end up in 10 years? Maybe Paris. <laughs> I, uh, I always had in the back of my head, like, uh -huh. New York was the number one goal. New York was the goal because it's a little more attainable than Paris. But I have a soft spot in my heart for Europe. And I think I see myself getting a contract job, maybe taking a little bit of time off, you know, traveling there and experiencing a different culture maybe for a little while you know mm -hmm. maybe not just a trip because the culture there is very similar to New York but also very different and I think I could thrive there in a similar way but still learn a lot of new things because you're in a different culture mm -hmm. I took three semesters of French so I kind of <laughs> remember some of it I could brush up a little so that would be maybe my 10-year goal is to be in France for mm -hmm. a little while because it has it's, there's a tug here mm -hmm. and I, I know I gotta follow that. Oh, well, when you follow in Paris, you better take us with you. The the New York spirit is going to be one of immense pressure because now you have to produce. Mm -hmm. What do you think your new bosses are going to be like? I'm not sure. Hopefully, like you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Good answer. So Good like, answer. Well, I'll just brag on Devon for a little bit as a testimonial inside an interview, but um, that's just how we go. But mm -hmm. Devon is so pure and sweet. I've never had a boss where they don't say a crossword, they don't have a cross tone. And that is just a true inward expression of you know, security and inner peace that I feel from you, and that's just rare to find in a person. So having a boss like that, I've been spoiled. I, having a coworker like Linda, I've been spoiled because we just get along so well. That's all of us as a collective. But individually, it was really nice, and I was grateful to have them. A, 
you know, most people are not as nice as him, and so I'm going to have to get my tough skin back on um, from kind of when I got out of college and just amplify that more because I'm going to need even a thicker skin than I already have. And I think I have a pretty thick skin, but it's going to be another realm of competitiveness and challenge and adapting to some harsher personalities rather than adapting to a great, you know, nice, inviting personality like yours. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be a challenge in more respects because of that. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two questions that individuals normally ask me. I'm going to ask you the same thing. What do you put first, your passion or the money aspect of going after any objective? I'll answer the first part of the question. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you But um, passion is my middle name, and that sounds really lame, but it really is, and that's if I could, I remember in the interview, if I could describe myself in one word, Odette asked me, you know, that question, and I said passionate without even hesitating, because I'm like, that's, if I had to pick one word, that's it, that's the adjective, and that carried, that has carried me my whole life, you know, I, my business, my parents are both business-oriented people, and I really respected that, but I was always very different from them, and so, you know, having a lot, lots of artistic and linguistic passions, both in English and art, I always felt out of place in my family, too, in Florida. <laughs> and so I was like, you know, my passions are so different from my family. So in turn, I majored in two things that are both like English and art. And so I already took passion over money going into college because <laughs> those are very risky degrees to an outsider who doesn't work hard. But I happen to have a really good work ethic, and so I can make those degrees work. That's sort of college 101. You know, mm -hmm. like, if you get a philosophy degree, you better be getting your master's or your I think PhD. so. So, you know, it's just, you know, or you have the work ethic to back it up. And so I, I do, and I'm really proud of myself in that way. I will say that. Um, so the money will come because of my, my hustle, but my passion is, is, you know, paramount in my life. It is number one because that's me. That's just who I am. I can't do it any other way. Notice she said hustle. <laughs> Let's, I love that word. <laughs> she sure could hustle. <laughs> she knows how to work it. The And what we enjoyed best as we came from the business summit in Melbourne, sometimes when you hire someone, you don't know who you're going to get. But it was real impressive to see how you were able to work a room. And not only work a room whereby everybody loved her, but at the end of the day they were asking, man, that Alex girl, she is something else, amongst other things. But <laughs> even for me in that space, you took what would have been a burden and made that burden extremely light. The area of your expertise in moving between English and art can be challenging, but I don't think that you're going to fail at it. I think you have the natural ability to have a magnetic attraction that will pull people closer to you. And I think within that space, you're going to go very far. And it's been a pleasure having you. Now, if individuals that are listening to this podcast have in an area of their lives balancing between family life and making an identity for themselves, what do you think you can give them in terms of a message to say, how do I step out of the shadows from my parents and make that leap of faith going into an area that I don't have all the answers, that, that I don't know what the future holds for me at this particular juncture, but I know that I'm being pulled passionately in this direction. For those individuals who are stuck in the shadows of their parents and afraid to leave the nest, what do you say to them? Well, I've had this conversation recently with my dad, and we were just discussing how we get along so well, but we're so different, and they're so proud of me because I'm different. I'm grateful to have a family that supports and encourages me being different. <laughs> Not like I'm just this crazy loon, but I am. my passions are in a different direction than theirs. And the way I express myself is very similar to them, but also very different. And so I think, you know, in life, you know, as a younger person my age, in their 20s, when you're 
when you've been conditioned your whole life to be around your parents, you've just been, by default, grown up with them. And they've been an influence in your life just because they're your parents. You have to take that and respect that, but know that you're put on this earth for one reason, is to be yourself <laughs> and to grow within yourself and become self-aware. Because you are just in a family unit. You are not one unit. You are yourself. And that's in any relationship, in my opinion. And so to grow yourself is the biggest, most important thing in your life, in my opinion. So finding out who you are, finding out what you love, finding out what makes you upset. Maybe things that make you upset don't make your parents upset. And so lots of things like that are important to get to know yourself and not just share your opinions with your family just because you grew up with it and it's comfortable. Go outside your comfort zone, like figure out how you think and figure out what you love. And that will bring you far because if you don't know who you are, you can't go out in the world and do anything <laughs> with purpose. I mean, it's harder to just be a drone. No one wants to be a drone. And there's this quote from Oscar, Oscar Wilde, and it's something kind of silly but true. It's be yourself because everyone is already taken. <laughs> I have to remind myself that every day to just really pursue every impulse of my individual being because that's how I'm going to further myself in the world. That's a very wise saying. I, I better write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it down for you right now. <laughs> now, what would be your last word of the day that speaks truth into your life? What would be something that you would want to leave an impression about who you are and what your spirits are? Um, can you rephrase the question? Sure. If there was one word to describe your mission here on Earth, what would that be? Now I'm pausing and thinking. It's usually I'm like, boom! <laughs> I know. <laughs> that is a hard question. Uh -huh. um, passionate in that context comes secondary, because I did speak about that a lot. Um, I think my mission in life is to just love and receive others and I think that's a lot of you know that's the goal of a lot of people on this earth that's mm -hmm. a lot of the the mentality that we have and it's hard that's discipline to receive people and love them and listen to people and I think that if I could you know one of my lasting gifts would to be to really accept and listen to people and receive their energy and their story like Devon does so much in this business is to hear their story that is actually a really big part of life, is to receive people's, you know, even if it's little, you know, if even if they just want to talk and kind of vent a little bit, that's an impression and that's a chain reaction. And to really in invest in people and to listen is what I want to do, because it's a lost art. People just want to serve themselves, which is makes sense, but to not interact with others in that selfless way, that's discipline, and I want to be able to do that. See why we hired her? All those good things that make us feel so good about ourselves. I want to listen to us. But this is Devon Dames. It's an honor to have Alex Monroe with us here today. And for her time spending with us, we were enlightened by her presence. We were guided by her light. And we were certainly encouraged by her generosity. Now, we can't see what the future holds, but we know it's going to be very bright for her. And this extension of us, her leaving us, even though it's temporary, <laughs> will be a chance of a lifetime for her to start her own path. So whether she ends up in New York, whether she ends up in Paris, <laughs> we know that we won't be too far. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's always a pleasure having her spirit, her essence, that helps us to grow and grow in a manner that it's very positive where we have a lasting impression on others so don't allow money to be your god don't allow passions to be jaded or defaulted take some cues from her step out of your comfort zone step into the path that you need to direct your life in and you'd be surprised where you end up just simply try to find open-minded people who can encourage you and support you in everything that you do. And all will be great. So don't look at a mistake and say to yourself, 
oh, I can't learn something from that. Because every mistake you conquer is a mistake that's going to teach you how to also enjoy the smaller wins at every level of your intersection. So continue to enjoy as we encourage Alex on her way. We love her to death, by the way. So you go with God and allow us to grow with you, girl. Hug time, hug time. Hug time. Microphone, just to be aware. Oh, <laughs> oh heart to heart. Oh. Well, that's what it's all about. And for those of you who want to reach Alex at her publishing location, I'm sure we will forward that later on. Yeah, don't know. <laughs> the end. The end.